Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 95, we're going to do another episode on how to achieve great sound. And we're going to focus on the universal kit preamp. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. So, last week I took a look at where best to inject some magic into your system, and I proposed the preamp was the best place. Yes, you can tweak your system at pretty much any place you want, and you should, but the preamp makes a lot of sense for making major sonic improvements. Hopefully. This fresh look at the Universal Kit preamp was inspired by a review from one of our experienced test builders and an uber audio enthusiast. And he made a huge review. It's pages long. And you can, you'll be able to read the whole thing. It's in the store under the Universal Kit preamps. But we'll look at the highlights. So let's just park the Universal Pre for the moment. We're going to come back to it and take a quick look at why this preamp sounds so great. Okay. Okay, let me grab a pointer here and zoom in so you can read along. You can, you can see the whole thing in the store if you want. So, here's what he said. We're just going to hit the highlights, otherwise the show would be an hour long. First, the build of this kit was on the easier side of a kit amp. Well, that's good to hear. And this is an experienced um, kit amp builder, so that was, that's excellent. I'm really happy to hear that. This preamp is a tube roller's dream, as one can adapt the sound to taste depending on the tubes used. And he goes on to list um, tubes that we carry and that he rolled in. And they're all wonderful sounding tubes. So he had a really good selection of tubes for critical listening tests. With all the tubes, the soundstage width was very similar in my room, varying less than an inch or two. The imaging was good to excellent in all cases. The differences I could pick out distinctly were mainly the low to mid bass presentation. And he goes on to describe in detail um, what those differences were and where he heard them. In some cases, the separation between the singers and instruments had more air to my ear, but it's hard to explain. The universal preamp was also dead silent, with it turned all the way up to 11. And if you want to know what 11 is, you have to watch the film Spinal Tap. That's all I'm going to tell you about that. Be prepared to laugh. There was nothing coming from my highly efficient Klipsch Forte 3s. Okay, well, Klipsch... Virtually all clip speakers have at least a horn-loaded tweeter, and they are pretty much all high-efficiency speakers. So if you have a noise issue in your system, they're gonna they're gonna let you know <laughs> in a hurry. So that's great. So we're low noise. Well, we knew that already, but it's good to see um, other builders. Um, you know using the, their own specific techniques and see how they do and confirm that in fact the unit's low noise. I wanted to compare the Universal preamp to my old shit Freya Plus using the same tubes so I swapped and compared the 6SN7s I had on hand. The sound stage was narrower on the Freya but still wider than my speakers but noticeably less enveloping. Imaging was close but details took a back seat to the melatonin kit. Okay, well, we're going to talk about why our imaging is better and why our details are better. And we'll look at the actual pre when we, we go over those things. And then he goes on to say, I think the dual mono design of the universal preamp is contributing to this phenomena. Yes. And he says, the Freya Plus had a strange tone present in all of the listening I did almost like the low mid treble was pumped up. I never noticed this in my previous sessions, but in back-to-back -back listening, it was very apparent. So this is a really good point that 
that our, our test builder and reviewer is making. Often you don't, you don't hear, I was going to say you don't see, but you know what I mean. You don't hear um, something that's not, not quite right or 100% in your system until you actually put something in that clarifies it or clears it up or does it well. And that said, if the he he, and he finishes off by saying, if the options of the Universal 612 SN7 Pre cover your needs and you have a DIY spirit and want to learn how your audiophile equipment works, I'd strongly suggest giving one a try. And he goes on to say that's a relative bargain. Well, it is a relative bargain, and that's something I should talk about. One of our goals, we had. Our main goals were to introduce people to building their own equipment, high quality equipment. At the end of the build, we want you to have had some fun. Sure, you'll have learned some things, hopefully, about how to assemble um, amplifiers and how they work and how a, a good layout is done, but we wanted a great sounding amp at the end of the day. And we also wanted to make them affordable. So, in audio, strangely, if I doubled the price of the kit amps, we probably would sell more. I know, that sounds really strange and maybe a little fucked up. <laughs> Sorry. But it's true. Um, but, you know, we put a very modest margin on the kits. Now, here's the problem. Everything has gone up since we priced the kits. We have lots of good inventory in stock for all of the kits, but it's good for a couple of runs, and then we'll have to restock, particularly the iron, and everything is going to go up in price, unfortunately. So the kits are a bargain right now, because they're essentially priced before inflation hit. Okay, that's your heads up. If you were thinking about one, now's the time to grab one. And he goes on, like any good reviewer, he goes on to list the equipment that's in the audio stream. I want to thank uh, all of our test builders, but in particular uh, our Uber test builder for this amazing review um, to have us go head to head with the Freya and come out ahead. That It just blew me away when I read that. You can hope for a review like that, but... You know, I couldn't have written this myself if I tried. So, thank you very much. We much appreciate that. Now, let's get the amp back here. So, let's back out so you can see it. Now, I'm not going to spend all day or all show talking about the Freya. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the Universal. I've got the shit amp on my brain now. Um, so, it's, it's an okay looking pre. But there's no bells and whistles on here. I mean, right away, if you're a switch and um, VU meter kind of a person and you love, you know, to have gadgets on your stuff, don't ever look at our equipment for that because everything you add to an amplifier, whether it's a kit or whether it is a manufactured product, every single thing you add detracts from the sound in most cases. So less is more, particularly with preamps. But with all audio equipment, normally that's a good general rule to follow. So if a manufacturer's thrown a whole bunch of switches and fancy dials onto their product and slapped an extra thousand bucks on it, walk away <laughs> fast. Because <laughs> that's all garbage. It's not helping you. Okay, let's flip it over. Because this is really where the sound is, right? There's a couple of key components you should look for in audio designs. Not just our kit amps, but other people's designs. There are a lot of people that make, let's call them boutique or small production uh, amplifiers, tube amplifiers, that are great quality, that sound great. And one of the things I discovered early on in prototype designing and building is that a dual mono power supply, wow, that gives you a fantastic stereo separation and it's not that hard to design. It's a little bit more work, a little bit more money on the kit cost, but it's worth every penny. It's worth, it's worth twice the, the money it costs in components because you need double the power supply and you need to be a little bit more careful with separating your channels. So here's the two power supplies. 
which is the left channel and the right channel. And here are the two power supply boards. These are version one boards. And Charles just redesigned the board for uh, higher performance and simpler build. So here's the new board. And it's basically, because we're selling quite a few of the Universal Pre's, it's basically a dedicated board for the Universal Pre. It won't probably work for any other kit. So every position on the board is an actual part, whereas the previous version was a little bit more universal. It could have done probably a couple of different kinds of kits or different topologies of construction. So these boards are just absolutely beautiful. Charles is great at designing the boards for as low a noise build as possible. So he keeps the high voltage and the low voltage signal connections away from each other and it's just really a well laid out board. So those will start going out with um, with the new kit amps as, as people start ordering them. So you've got separate channels. The, really what you get in this design is you get two channels or two mono preamps inside one chassis. So the other thing you should, you should notice is that you have some really short signal paths. You're not sending the signal all over a big honking PCB or all over a large chassis. It's a very compact chassis and that means that the signal stays really short. It comes comes in, goes through the volume pot, goes through the board, and out it goes. And there really is very little distance. In fact, the longest distance the signal has to travel is just from the RCAs over to the volume and over to the boards. So short signal pass, separate channels, Wow, you know, that gives us, it gives us about, gets us halfway to great sound. What's the other half? Well, it's the tubes, because never forget that the amplifiers are the tubes. <laughs> and in the, um, in this is actually kit number one. I always build kit one and I film it so everybody knows how they go together. But in here, plugged in are the wonderful early tongues, the tongue saw, uh, these are mil spec actually, let me get it up on camera so you can see it, these are the JAN, CTL just means that's the tongue saw designator from the US government, I think, and of course 12 SN7GT. This is a universal preamp, it can play 6 SN7s, 12 SN7s, and virtually every close variation to those tubes. and Charles has actually got a whole lineup of tubes to talk about because, as I said, half the sound is the quality of the design and build, and half is the tubes that you can play. And that's where the Universal Preamp comes in its own. It can play all kinds of tubes that most 6SN7 preamps can't. Okay, hang on a second. Let's clear the decks and get Charles in here. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got some old, interesting looking military boxes. And, of course, everybody knows I'm a fan of the Loctals. Here's a good example of our adapters that we're using as well. And you can see they're really nice. They've got sort of a brass outer coating and a ceramic inner. They, these are fantastic. We're using these constantly. So, the uh, let's start with the Loctal and just get it out of the way here. So the, you can see these have the beautiful tall bottles, tons of gettering on them, just like I showed you before. They have those straight T plates, and these are very early tubes. These are um, late 30s, early 40s production, and I'm actually not sure if these were produced by Sylvania or by National Union. So you'll see a lot of conversation online about how there were really only two manufacturers, National Union and Sylvania. And I'm not sure what these ones are. There isn't a whole lot of information on, on how to identify them, but people say that these tall boy straight plates are National Unions. Uh, maybe it's just one version of them. But we do know that they sound absolutely amazing. And these are equivalent to the 6SN7GTs. So of course you can't play them in everything, but you can play them in the Universal. What do we have next here? So, 
Next, we have this beautiful CBS Hytron box. Let's take a look at that. It's a great example of an old, new old stock, new in box, 6SN7 GT. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, if I can get the box open, where's the knife here? Oh, the knife's around here somewhere. It's never where you want it, though. <laughs> here, you can use this. Okay, let's pop that open. There we go. Now, we always try our best not to damage these boxes if we can, but they're so delicate, they're so old, it can be hard to do sometimes. So take a look at that. That's It's got a great label on it. We've got those two rivet straight T plates, bottom getter. They're they're fairly plain looking tubes. They look very similar to the GTB types, but they also look very similar to the early tongue saws and the early Sylvanias. And they are also great sounding tubes. So these are the GTs. We've got a few of these, uh, both new old stock and used, that are that are going to be in the store, and these will play on the Universal. Now, this is a very ugly looking box here, but it contains something really nice. Everybody should know what that is by now. Look at that gettering. That, of course, is a Sylvania bad boy, but, oh, let me see if I can get that. Sorry, the label's a little bit faded here, but that is a 12SN7 mil spec bad boy. You probably won't be able to see it on camera, but it's got that huge foil getter in the bottom. And of course, 12SN7, it'll run on the Universal with the right power adapter for the filament. So these are great tubes. We've um, we've gotten a bunch of these in, I think, and uh, and they're already in the store ready to purchase. And last here, we have another similar box. Actually, let's talk a little bit. This one, you can actually read it on here, but this one says that it is from the Sperry Gyroscope Company. And they were a military manufacturer during World War II and later periods that made uh, aeronautics navigation equipment. Um, I believe they also made bomb sites. They actually built aircraft as well. And this one is dated to after the war. 1952 was when it was packaged. So these tubes, the Sylvania was also purchased by them were high-end mil-spec tubes for the time. And what do we have in here? Aha! It's another one of our favorites. The Tungsol GT Mouse Ears. Again, a 12SN7 version of it. You can see they're testing great. They're beautiful new old stock. The labels look great. The pins look great. And it's really hard to find these mouse ears testing testing well. Most of the time we're getting them in used. They don't test well at all, but these new old stock ones are, are absolutely fantastic. And just real quick here, I wanted to show off a little detail on the box. So on these military boxes, you're often going to see either an 11 or a 13 digit number on them. And what that is, this is the uh, 11 digit. And that is called a federal stock number. And this is the way that the military kept track of their equipment back in the day. And so if you looked up this number in the right database, you could actually see it pointing to this tube and who made it at the time. So that's really interesting. And you'll see these numbers on all the mil military boxes. And uh, I don't know, it's just an interesting bit of history, I think. All right. So, well, well, thanks for that, Charles. I know you're passionate about these very early tubes. Very passionate, and I, I love looking into the history of them. And uh, it's just amazing that all these tubes you're going to be able to play in the Universal, and you can hear that great vintage tryout sound. Yeah, it's amazing, eh? The difference those early tubes sound. Well, what came in this past week? Well, I keep saying it, but we've got thousands of tubes in transit. I should say we have tens of thousands of tubes in transit because we have a lot of tubes in transit. Um, but it takes a while for new stock to arrive. So let's just see what came in this week. 
we have got a bunch more of these wonderful um, Svetlana. Uh, these are Soviet-made equivalents to the 6AS7G, and these are just great tubes. And um, I've got a lot more coming in still, and we're selling quite a few of these to, I think, mostly to um, people that have OTL headphone amps use the 6AS7 quite a bit. And this has become one of my most popular 6AS7s. What else came in? Um, a whole bunch of 6N23Ps. Now, you might not know that Soviet number, but what that is, is an equivalent to the 6DJ8-6922 tube, which is actually, it's a tube that has had some popularity over the years, but in the last year, a lot of builders, commercial builders of amps, have started using this tube. So they're getting more and more popular, and luckily I have a lot of good inventory. This is uh, a Voskog rocket. Uh, and you, if you can see the logo of the horizontal rocket, you know why that everybody calls them rocket tubes. These are from 1977, and this is the. There's two main types of the of the Voskhod tube. There's a gray shield, and that's pin nine, and pin nine's right here, and it connects up to a shield that separates the two halves. So on Almost all Soviet twin tri miniature twin triodes, they'll have a shield in between the halves that goes to ground, and that helps reduce crosstalk between the sections, reduce noise. It's just a brilliant uh, design feature. And there's some North American and Western tubes that were made as well with pin 9 to ground. And here is the same tube, but with the silver shield version. And you can see it's just, instead of being, you know, a gray a gray shield, we have a silver shield. Anyways, a whole bunch of those are in the store. It's a, the 6DJ8 and the 6923 and all of those uh, similar tubes is the tube that I specialize in. And I've saved, as always, I save the best to last. So one of my favorite modern 6SN7s is the very early Sylvania GTA. This is the angle plate version. There is an earlier GT uh, a straight plate version that's quite rare. They're very expensive. Uh, they don't often test good, unfortunately. Most of that's not probably the tube's fault. They're just getting old, right? So, you know, once you start hitting 70 years old, you know, used tubes in particular, and that's what's mostly available these days, you're going to find that there's a fairly high rejection rate at the testing stage, just because the tube, you know, has seen a long life. These are great. They are testing new old stock. They look in good shape. I got quite a few of them in. The supplier is a great, great guy. His testing was superb. And that doesn't always happen. <laughs> uh, of course, I paid for the testing. I mean, I paid properly for the tubes is what I'm saying. They weren't cheap tubes. Um, but anyways, a whole bunch of these came in. This is the second version after the Sylvania Bad Boy. And they have it all. They've got They've got that Sylvania house sound that's warm and rich that a lot of people love. Not everybody. If you like something a little more detailed, you'll go over to the Tungsol. If you like a little bit more warmer and richer sound, you'll go over to the Sylvanias. That's the beauty of tube rolling, as you can change the sound of your amp by changing the tubes. Because the tubes are the amplifier. Yay, everybody got it. Anyways, um bunch of pairs are in the store and the if you're looking for a more modern but still you know a tube that has its roots in that sound from the 1940s and 50s then the GTA the Sylvania GTA wow that does it every time and it's a favorite of many audiophiles okay well if you stay to the very end here's some discount codes to help you out I want to thank all of my customers that helped fill up our PayPal account because we had a, hu a huge order to make and we needed some PayPal money to do it. Uh, and don't forget, I've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on me, folks. And don't forget that there's a secret code hiding in here somewhere. 
And the hint that I always give you is that it's logical. So if it's a little bit more, continue on down there. Yeah, okay, that would be, you got it. Okay, everyone, stay safe, have fun. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.